Chances are, this man has been plastered all over your social media feed. You probably already have your own opinions about how the hearing went by now, but I want to talk about why it's happening now all of a sudden. It's not sudden. It's been ongoing for several years. It's not sudden at all. This hearing comes in the wake of growing Western distrust in the app. But is there a basis for the call to ban TikTok? Bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive side eye. Or is this just another battleground for US and China tension? If you are here because the American people need the truth about the, th the threat TikTok poses to our national and personal security. This threat can be summarized into three main concerns. Proponents say that TikTok collects user data, and then this data is shared with the CCP. There are also claims that TikTok intentionally censors content that the CCP finds politically sensitive. But is this true? We do not sell data to data brokers, if that's the question. That, and you've never done that? I do not believe so. I mean, you're probably thinking all social media collects an insane amount of information from you, right? So TikTok is um, apparently particularly good at uh, pushing, uh, at detecting what you uh, what users want and pushing out. So that by almost by implication means that it collects a lot of very detailed data. But there is actually research that showed that whatever TikTok collects still falls within general industry norms. So why are countries more distrustful of TikTok over other social media platforms? The main concern is that China has laws that compel Chinese citizens and businesses to support and facilitate China's government access to the collection, transmission, and storage of data. The fear is that ByteDance, a Chinese company that owns TikTok and based in Beijing, is subject to this law. Do you think that TikTok as a company actually is subject to these laws? The question is, we're not really sure at this point. It's something that has to be tested. However, the issue here is that whatever request does not have to be made public, right? So we actually can't see the test happening. I think the concern is they don't want to have this test happen, right? Because it opens them up to a certain degree of risk. Is there a similar risk from the US towards like these American companies as well then? There is a risk of surveillance and, and data security. The issue with the US is that in terms of what the state can and cannot do, there are more restrictions. So you you can you can sue the state and actually have a chance of winning uh, in terms of protecting your data. Um, and then um, companies have some degree to stand up. So I don't know if you recall this, maybe about five, six years ago, the FBI was trying to request that uh, Apple release their encryption. Uh, Apple refused to do so. The fact is that you can have an a corporation stand up and say no. That is uh, less likely in the, in the case of, of the PRC. TikTok CEO said that this issue would be mitigated by the ongoing Project Texas, a plan by TikTok to work with Oracle, a Texas-based company, to store the data of US users. Only vetted personnel operating in a new company called TikTok US Data Security can control access to this data. Now additionally, we have plans for this company to report to an independent American board with strong security credentials. In, if it's based in the US, then the question is, okay, if um, if Chinese authorities make a request, can you say, well, this is a US subsidiary, therefore they cannot comply. Uh, there could be some protection. Uh, it's not perfect because there are probably still other workarounds, hacking and so on, that can get, get to the data. But of course, it's not just about the data, right? I mean, the relationship between US and China has been tense for quite a while now, and particularly tense more recently. Recall in uh, maybe about a decade ago, uh, the PRC had banned Google, uh, then Facebook, now Meta, all of Meta's products, so WhatsApp, uh, Instagram, Facebook, they're, they're off, uh, Twitter. Uh, so in some respects, this is a relatively late incoming sort of response uh, by, by the US. China has long pursued a policy of cyber sovereignty, which is the idea that a state has complete control over its digital resources, which includes data. Whereas the US has largely argued for a more capitalist view, where the data belongs to the companies and they have the rights to manage it. If you think about the US case, they are essentially using the PRC's argument on the PRC. And the PRC is not happy with that argument. So, so this is where these things get, get quite complicated, where you know, it's, not just a, it's not just a commercial issue. I mean, ultimately it becomes a, well, I can take your data, but you can't take my data kind of issue, right? But back to the title of the video. Is TikTok just a new battleground for US and China tensions? It is a battleground. There are, there are many battlegrounds. The, the fact of the matter is that the US and PRC have lots of 
different areas where they disagree right now. But just because it's political motivation, make I have to make it that does not mean that TikTok is in the clear, right? Uh, these things can can all happen at, at the at the same time. So yes, TikTok is just one area of contest between the US and China. But I think it's a useful case study for us amateurs to understand the conflict and even geopolitics better. And that's to ask ourselves this. What are the different sides primarily interested in? What are their goals and what's at stake for them? How do you see the situation developing? And do you think TikTok will actually eventually really be banned? Will it pass? So uh, there, are, there are two possibilities right now, right? One is to uh, force a sale of TikTok, which is possible. Um, another is a ban. The Chinese authorities, the PRC authorities have come out strongly against both, uh, which also I think is a bit curious to have a state uh, be so defensive of particular corporations. But, you know, I, I think the, the US and PRC uh, basically can't really do much to each other. It's just going to be very much like the situation we saw earlier with the Google, Meta, Twitter bans. The, um, the, the other side will express a lot of unhappiness, but there's nothing that they are really going to do because they may figure that escalating on this matter, especially beyond a symbolic gesture, may not be worth it. Okay, last question. Where does Singapore fit in all of this? Professor Chong said that in the short run, we may actually benefit from it. We might start to see, or maybe are already seeing, more Chinese firms relocate to Singapore to get around restrictions they might face in the US and in Europe. But the long run is where it gets tricky. As US-China competition gets more severe, it could put us really in the hot seat. Right, you get, get pressure on both, from both sides. So the question uh, I think for Singaporeans to ask ourselves is also, if in future more of this sort of white glove business is happening in Singapore from either side, right? Um, so we have to ask us, what sort of credibility do we have? Uh, do, do we do we risk end up seeing like a proxy for someone else? Whether we are or not is a separate issue. Whether we seem like on this is what I think really matters. That could actually make a lot of the pressure and tension from various sites become a lot more serious. And I think this is also a reflection of the new kind of world that we are in. So all this sort of globalization and integration was wonderful. I think going up to maybe, um, you know, as, as recently as maybe five, five years ago. But uh, that's in a world where there was some sort of general understanding and commitment to openness and integration on many levels. Uh, we may not be in that world anymore. Uh, and if we're not in that world, then some of our strategies may need to shift.